Greetings, everyone. DFG here. John Spates. Hey, guys. Here with Gideon Flight. Um, John and I decided today that we get together and uh, uh, talk about uh, economics. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Matter of fact, in terms of it, it, the conversation, kind of started very interesting. He asked me the other day, well, "You go ahead. What, what did you ask me? What's how did you?" What, um, we was talking about uh, employment. All the stores closed, and I said, "You know, Cap. You know, what do you think's going on?" In my opinion, I think. Uh, there's a bottom of out happening because all these jobs can't afford, you know, paying these wages. Minimum wage is constantly going up. And, you know, for instance, yesterday I was on my way to work and uh, one of my uh, coworkers said to me, uh, Papa Gino's next door put up a sign saying to the employees, we're now closed and go apply to another branch. Not even giving the person the opportunity or a heads up. So I said, you know, Kat, what's going on? Yeah, and not only that, in Papa Gino, if you guys don't know, is a pizza chain yeah. up here in New England. Got Very about, popular. Yeah, got about 250 stores. Mm -hmm. And because of, you know, competition and, and cost of goods uh, and some other challenges, matter of fact, bankruptcy, so they're about to go out of business. And then we heard Lowe's. 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 Uh, 20 stores in the uh, United States and 31 in Canada. Yeah, so they're, and they're talking about they're going to be closed by February 1st, 2019. So if you work for Lowe's, I mean that that's how much of a notice uh, that you that 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 you have. You got a three month notice, and that brings up a lot. I mean, if Lowe's is shutting down all these stores, that means it's affecting other businesses, which means people ain't building that many more houses. They're not doing construction jobs, like so. That business right there is affecting a lot of other things. Like what's what's going on? What's business? the truth about the economy? Right. I guess, you know, that, that needs to be the real question because we're all hearing about we having this booming economy right. and, you know, uh, America has never done as good as it's been done under the under the Trump administration. Right. And, you know, they had, I was looking at an article uh, the other day, I think it was in the, um, I want to say it was in the, uh, what's it, the, uh, not the New York Times, the paper that you find in all the damn hotel lobbies. Um I can't even think of it. But anyway, the, the headline was 250,000 new jobs, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting there saying, okay, 250,000 new jobs yeah. doing exactly what? Right. You follow me? And and, and, and in these 250,000 new jobs, you know what I'm saying? Are there, is, is that just people who, you know, that, that is actually new jobs? Mm -hmm. Or those are jobs that are being created temporarily, you know, for right. the, you know, uh, seasonal jobs or jobs that are, you know, only going to mm -hmm. last for, a small period of time, and even broader than that is that when they start talking two hundred fifty thousand jobs, again to your point, why are these businesses closing if the economy is doing so doggone good? Right. And exactly what kind of work are they talking about with these two hundred and fifty thousand jobs? Well, in my opinion, you know, it goes back to um, the mom, mom and pop shops. You know, you had uh, all these big corporations coming around and closing down the mom and pop shops, and then you get Amazon. Uh huh. That's closing down all these big corporations, and you know, yes, two hundred fifty thousand jobs are being created. But Amazon's opened up a warehouse, I think, somewhere in Virginia. That's they're about to employ fifty thousand people. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, only thing manufacturing, you just pretty much putting the item in the box and shipping it out. So that could be considered creating jobs. Which yeah, Ex exactly right. And and so what it is. In my opinion, those numbers are inflated. Absolutely. And and, and, and not, they're not inflated in terms of 250,000 jobs, but the type of jobs and the longevity of those jobs right. is what they're not telling you and what they're paying in those jobs. Or if it's part-time or full-time. Exactly right. Because <laughs> a lot of companies are not even hiring full-time right. anymore. If I remember, it, you know, BJ, John mm -hmm. and I used to work for this uh, wholesale club by the name of BJ's, mm -hmm. and I remember they had a, had a, an initiative to, to eliminate full-time jobs. Yeah, and they true. had a ratio. They wanted you to be at a, a if my members are correct, they want you to be 30% full-time and 70% part-time. Now, how are you going to make a living on a part-time job with with, 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 uh, with a starting wage of $11 an hour? Yeah. No and, and, you inflation know, going on. Right. And when they say part-time, we're talking about 20 hours a week. Right. And so when you talk, and then you, like you said, you factor in inflation with that. As well, but the fact of the matter is, if I tell you two hundred fifty thousand new jobs, but I'm not telling you if they're full time jobs, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you how much these jobs are going to pay, mm -hmm. right? right? And I'm not telling you whether or not these jobs are temporary jobs. Right. 
For example, because at Amazon, I guarantee you, that's through the holiday season. Absolutely. We're about to go through the busiest time Absolutely. of year. Of course, a lot of people are going to be shipping Absolutely. things, you know, gifts and things like that. Absolutely. So, of course, let's see what the, what 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 Amazon, what Am, how, many, how many people are Amazon going to lay off come January, Absolutely. you know, 1st. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So when you start to look at these numbers, and it is a real serious thing, and, and that's why we're bringing it up. Because when you're looking at the job, you know, market and industry, I think you have to be, you have to go in and do your homework. You have to... I'm talking about you, uh, John Doe and Jane Doe. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the, you know, corporate America already has this strategy. It already has this financial plan. And if there's a good company, that's projected five, ten years into the future. Right. It already knows what, it, what, it, what its expenses has to be in order for it to get to the EBITDA, the bottom line that it wants to achieve. Absolutely. And it's not concerned about how many people they're going to employ. Right. If I'm, to tell you that, is, you know, that many, that's almost a ploy. Mm -hmm. To tell you who they're going to employ. Right. You follow me? It's to get you to continue to feel comfortable about spending your hard-earned money mm -hmm. without warning you that if, if the economy was to crash, right. then you're going to be up the creek without a paddle. Right. But that's not their problem. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. Absolutely. And that's why we're talking about this. Because if, if, if you don't understand what is really getting said and, and go in and do a deep dive analysis on the job market mm -hmm. and find out for yourself where is industry going. Right. In the future, you know what effect AI is going to have it's already on the workforce, and already happening. And like, let me give you an example. Of what I mean by you know AI, I was looking at you know the jobs that AI is going to be affecting within the next ten years, and check out some of these jobs, guys. Uh, pharmacists, lawyers, and paralegals. These are jobs that are going to be replaced by AI. Drivers, mm -hmm. that's truck drivers, Uber drivers, mm -hmm. any kind of driver, bus drivers. Um, Astronauts. Now, how the hell astronauts get in there? <laughs> I think that's some deep state shit. But we go, okay, okay. We ain't gonna worry about no astronauts. Ain't nobody on the goddamn moon. But anyway, <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. Uh, store clerks. Yeah. Now you think about how many these retailers have store clerks. People who stock shelves. Right. People who replenish product. Right. right? Those jobs are gonna get eliminated. Absolutely. So you guys who've been around at some of these companies, you know, the cost of the world mm -hmm. for. You know, 15, 20 years, and you think you're going to retire, yeah, you better think lasts. again. You better enjoy while it's lasting. But in manufacturing, I was looking at some information that they're saying that manufacturing jobs are absolutely not coming back to the United States. Not only in manufacturing, because AI can do the work of one man. Matter of fact, the money that it would cost for them to invest in AI, mm -hmm. the return on it would be something like a thousand percent than having a person doing it. Even in China, which is one of the largest manufacturing countries in the world, and go look it up. Even in China, one of the largest manufacturing uh, countries in the world are now laying off people in the manufacturing industry because they're not going to need them. Mm -hmm. So anybody telling you that manufacturing jobs are coming back to America, guys, you know, you know, uh, that's the okie doke. You're going for they are not coming back. All right. So just believe that. Don't believe it. Just remember I told <laughs> it to you somewhere down the road. OK. And I just and I again, I'm not making this up, guys. I looked it up for myself. And they, I mean, you got machines now that can stock shelves, pull orders, a brick wall. Yes, yeah, <laughs> even construction jobs yeah. are going away. Mm -hmm. Bricklayer, something as basic as a bricklayer. We have AI machines now. An average man, for example, Jonathan, can 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 um, for a productivity standpoint, can 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 stack from three hundred to five hundred bricks a day per man. Mm -hmm. One AI machine can stack anywhere from twelve hundred to fifteen hundred bricks. Yes. Perfect. Perfectly. <laughs> and you got to worry about his back getting hurt. You ain't got to be because of the weather no bad. Break. He ain't got to get sick. Exactly right. You know, his daughter got to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. got to go to the PTA hey, meeting. Call him out today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so even in that industry, a couple of other ones, it, it's talking about um, soldiers, which yeah. kind of odd, but yeah, but, uh, yeah. but I'm sure a universal soldier. Oh, yeah. And soldier goes into law enforcement and things mm -hmm. like that as well, too. So, your police today is not going to look like your police officer 10 years, gonna, It could be the one in the sky. Them drones are always going to be watching. Well, it's already set up exactly. to do it. Exactly. All right? Babysitters, uh, rescue workers, things of that nature. These are some of the ones that they're already talking about. Mm. And another thing, too, that on, the, on those jobs, the jobs, and I just gave you a, a, a small little you know, synopsis of, of what's going to be here and what's not going to be here. But also, if you go back in and let's just go back to the wage conversation. Mm. All right? The average wage in the United States is $59,000 a year plus, give or take. In order for somebody to make $59,000 a year, if, you work, if you're an hourly wage earner, you would have to be making approximately $30 an hour. 
Let's say that again. Thirty dollars an hour. So you got to think in terms of what occupations that right. you can get just to get to the average income. Right. Okay. Of, right. of fifty nine, you got to be making thirty dollars an hour. Most that the, the minimum wage, like in Southern Louisiana right now, I think it's eight dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Wow. You do the math on that, that's like twenty two thousand dollars a year, twenty two thousand eight hundred dollars a year. That's if the average wage is at sixty thousand, rounding it off. You know, and 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 minimum wage is at twenty three thousand. That's less than half. That's right. almost it's only one third. You're poor. Absolutely. In other words, you're going to be working to stay poor. Right. Because you're going to move up. Not no entry level job paying no minimum wage. Any job that pays minimum wages, guys, mm -hmm. trust me. There's no advancement there. Not advancement where you can be able to raise a family no. or even take care of yourself. Right. Twenty, do the bills. And when we say twenty three thousand, we're not talking about income tax, mm -hmm. social security, health care, etc. Mm -hmm. By the time the government gets its share of it and all these other little, mm -hmm. you know, um, incidentals, mm -hmm. you're talking about you're probably going to be taking home not twenty three thousand. You're probably be taking home more like about sixteen thousand. Absolutely, and that's the cause of debt because a lot of people can't pay their bills, so they go out and get loans and get credit card bills with these outrageous. Uh, interest rates, and you just getting stuck in deeper and deeper and deeper. And and and, and that's a good point you bring up because they just passed a law recently. You know the uh, I, don't, I can't think of the name of the uh, companies who do the. Uh, it's like who you go to get your to get the the credit ratings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know who it is, but they even lowered the credit ratings now. Yeah. So they're saying if you got four hundred dollars in the bank, this is what they said, and you've had four hundred dollars in, in your savings account for three months, your credit score went up. I have an 800. Right, so if you had a 300, if you kept money in the bank $40 the last few months, you might have an 800 credit score now. So you can go buy a house, believe it or not. Of course, you'll be giving it back to them in about, you know, about two Six or three months, years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You follow me? But much, it's, so the, if economy is doing that well, why would they go out and do that, guys? Right. And that's what we're saying to you. And with AI coming, you follow me, and all these other challenges that are out there, I, what, what are we saying to you? Are we talking gloom and doom? No. What we're talking about it's common sense approach to life, right. common sense approach to your family, common sense approach to, you know, what the future holds. Because mm -hmm. a lot of young people, you know, they're going out there and they're getting all this debt and they're making all these decisions thinking that the future is bright because that's what we're all being told. Mm -hmm. But in truth, guys, it's a smoke screen. Right. One question that I asked you, Cap, you know, what can you tell this this, this new generation coming up that, that have no focus, uh, don't have really have a care in the world. What, what's a couple of uh, points would you give them t to show them that they better wake up right now? Well, first of all, you better get focused. Because first of all, once you get past eighteen years old, you're no longer a child. <laughs> you follow me? Unless you plan on living in your mama's basement until you right. get eighty years old. You follow me? Or living on your father's home until you get forty years old. You better get focused. Right. You know. You know. Eighteen years old, you're an adult. No more excuses. You know, for ten more. You know, I got time. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Every day has to matter. So the first advice, you better get serious. You know, time for play and going out and hanging out. I'll say this. I remember, you know, as a younger man, you know, I would talk to people all the time and they would come to me, especially as a professional, and, you know, and they would talk in terms of, I want to have what you have, Dale, and all these different things. I said, well, if you want to have what I have, you got to get serious now. I said, I didn't get this when I turned 40. Right. I was serious at 19. Right. So by the time I got 40, I had all these things that you want at 19, but you're playing around. All right. You're not going to get that. So you got to get focused. You got to have a plan. And I will tell you, you better, you, you know, and you better have a plan to execute the plan. Mm -hmm. All right. And so those are the that's that's what be my advice to you. And then in, in addition to that, where is the where is the industry going? Because a lot of these jobs that you know today are not going to be here, guys, ten years from now. And especially in construction, a lot of young people think in construction, man. I'm telling you, if you're in the construction industry, unless you in some, you know, architect, even in that. AI is going to mm -hmm. take that as well. And so you're going to have to really go back in and zero in. And, you know, this is a good conversation, Jonathan. Absolutely. And I can see we're kind of running out of time right. for this particular video. Part two. So if you guys will allow, what we're going to do, we're going to stop right here. And then we're going to come back with a part two because I think this one is worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you in just a second.